7.1. All right, 7.2, guys. Addition and subtraction formulas. What does addition and subtraction mean? Uh, plus and Adding minus. and subtracting, plus and minus. I know that sounds silly that I just said that, but here are your addition and subtraction formulas. I will give these to you. What you should do right now is take a screenshot of this. All right, you should take a screenshot of this, and every time you have a problem on WebAssign, right, on anything, this should be right next to the problems. There are three different sum and difference formulas, one for sine, cosine, and tangent. So what they're going to do is they're going to say to you, okay, what is the sine of this angle? What is the cosine of this one? All right, there's some specific things you need to know. I want you guys to write this down. Okay, I'm gonna write it down up here. We use these formulas. Hold on. Okay, you use these formulas when the angles that they ask for are not on the unit circle. I will give you a unit circle, all right? What you're going to do is use a combination, use a combo of angles on the unit circle how did I word this, to figure out exact answers, okay? Figure out exact answers. Now, let me explain to you what I mean. So go ahead and write this down. We use these sum and difference formulas when they say to you, what is the sign of such and such? And that angle is not on the unit circle. If I said 75 degrees, I'll give you a picture of a unit circle here in a second. But if I said 75 degrees, 75 is not on the unit circle. So you would use a combination of angles that are on the unit circle. You could either find two numbers that add up to 75. You could find two numbers that subtract to give you 75. It doesn't matter. We may not all use the same combination of angles. I might use 30 and 45, and you might use, you know, 135 minus something. Like, we may not all use the same kind, but we will always arrive at the same answer. So when it talks to you, like if it says to you, what is the sign of... 110. Well, you guys would be like, well, whoa, 110 is not on the unit circle. So you would find two angles that either added to give you 110 or subtracted to give you 110. That's how we find, that's, that's how you figure out which formula to use. All right? Some other things that you need to know, write this down. This is for angles on the unit circle. Okay. The sign is the y value of the ordered pair, and the cosine is the x value of the ordered pair. So if you had an ordered pair, let's say for example, if you had an ordered pair that was negative one half comma root three over two. Right, which one is the x value? Negative one half, okay, here's my x. And which one's the y value? Three Root three over two. So if I said to you, what is the cosine? You would say the cosine is negative one half. And you would tell me the sine is what? Root three over two. When you look at an ordered pair, the x value is the cosine, the y value is the sine. Now, what's tangent? Anybody remember? It'd be y over x. So you would take the y, put it over the x. All right, those are really important things to remember. So we're gonna go through this together. I promise there's two examples. We're gonna do them together so you guys understand exactly how to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do so I'm going to screenshot this. All right, we're going to do both of these. I'm just going to 
look at A first, but it says find the exact value of each expression. 75 degrees, look on your unit circle. Is 75 on the unit circle? No. no. Is there a combination of two angles that you could either add or subtract to give you 75? No. What? 45 degrees. Okay, I agree, 45 plus 30. Anybody have any questions about that? Is there anything else? Can I subtract two angles? I'm sure. I'm sure I could go like 225 minus, what's 225 minus, what about 225 minus 150? That gives me 75, right? So what you do is you find two things that either add or subtract to give you the number you're looking for. It doesn't always have to be the same thing. Octavio and Raul and I might get three different combinations that all equal the number we're looking for. I'm going to just go with 45 and 30, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and I'm going to say, okay, what is my question asking me? My question is asking me for what? Cosine, right? So you guys, we're going to use 45 and 30. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, 45 degrees. At 45 degrees, what's the ordered pair? And at 30 degrees, let me write it next to each other. And at 30 degrees, what is the ordered pair, right? That's why we use our unit circle. So I look at the unit circle. At 45 degrees, what's the ordered pair? Root 2, root two over 2, comma? Uh, root 2 over 2, okay? So I'm going to write root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. Oh, my battery's running low. Please hold. People at home, I'm gonna lose you, hang on. Okay, root two over two, comma root two over two. Does anybody have any questions about where I just got that from? Yes or no? Okay, so look at 30, what's 30? Uh, root three over two. And? And, half. and one half, okay, so I'm gonna write root three over two and one half. Everybody okay with that? All right, so now I'm going to say, okay, well, what's the cosine value of each one, and what's the sine value? This is my cosine, and this is my sine, right? Because cosine is the x value, sine is the y value, agreed? Okay, so the cosine here and this would be sine. Now, really and truly, guys, the only thinking we've had to do is find two numbers that add or subtract to 75. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Right? There hasn't been anything that's been, oh my gosh, this is so crazy hard. All we did was just find the two numbers that added or subtracted to give me 75, and then I wrote down their ordered pairs, and then I reminded myself that cosine is the x value, sine is the y value. So now the next part, this is important that you guys do this. What did we do to 45 and 30 to get 75? We added, okay, so let's look at our, let's look at our formula. Which trig function are we talking about? Sine, cosine, or tangent? What are they asking for? Cosine. So would you guys agree with me that this is the formula I'm going to use? Yeah. Because what did I do to 45 and 30? Yeah. I added. If Octavio said I'm going to use 225 and 150, which formula would he use? Uh, Why, Nino? Because, it's just, yeah. because he subtracted the two. Perfect. So notice what this formula is. It's cosine of one of the angles times cosine of the other minus sine times sine. You guys see that? So I'm going to write the formula out and I'm going to say, okay, I'm using the cosine and I'm doing 45 plus 30. Does it matter if I put the 45 first or the 30 first? Yes or no? Why not? Because we're doing what? Because we're adding. If I was using the subtraction formula, would it matter? Yes, you'd have to do 225 minus 150. So remind me again, what is it? Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So it's going to be the cosine of 45 
times the cosine of 30. What's the sign in the middle, guys? In the formula? Subtraction. Good. And then I have sine 45 times the sine of 30. Questions. I know this is new, but questions. All I did was pick the formula that went with what I was looking for. Since I added the two angles, I used the cosine of one angle plus the other one. Notice that when you add, just for the cosine formula, it's not the same in the other ones, but just for the cosine formula, when you're adding the two angles together, there's a subtraction in the middle. Now here is the part, guys, that is so super easy. You just have to pay attention. I'm gonna replace cosine of 45. What is the cosine of 45? Root two over two times, what is the cosine of 30? Root three over two. Does anyone have any questions about where I got that from? Okay, then what's the sine of 45? Root two over two times the sine of 30. One half. Now, all I did, ladies and gents, was substitute in the x value for the cosine, the y value for the sine. I'm not asking you to compute it. I'm not asking you to figure it out in calculator. It's given to you when you have the ordered pair. The reason I take this step right here at the beginning to write out the ordered pair, then write this one's cosine, this one's sine. So when you look at your formula, you literally are just taking this, putting it here, taking this, put it here. And now we just simplify. Right? We just simplify. These are two fractions that I'm multiplying together, correct? A house times a house gives me a bigger what? A bigger house. So square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6. Multiply the denominators. What's 2 times 2? 4. Can I simplify something that's underneath a radical with something that's not under a radical? No. That just has to stay as root 6 over 4. Now I have minus, what's the square root of 2 times 1? The square root of 2. And then what's 2 times 2? 4. I can go one step further in rewriting this to simplify because they have the same denominator. Agree? So I can rewrite this as the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. That is the most simplified I can make it. I can't say square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, because it's not. The square root of 6 is some weirdo decimal, and the square root of 2 is some weirdo decimal. But since it's a decimal that just keeps going on forever, it never ends, we just leave it as the square root of 6 squared to 2. You cannot combine them unless the square roots were the same. And that, that's it. That's all you have to do. That is your answer. It's just a matter of it takes a little bit of time because you got to find the angles that you're going to add together. Then you got to find them on the unit circle. Then you got to find the formula you want to use. But it's not anything you guys can't handle at all. Let's do B. All right, how is B a little different? It has a pi in it, okay? Pi over 12 is not going to be on the unit circle. You guys can try and figure out using your radians what will give you pi over 12 if you add or subtract. But what do you think is the easier thing to do? What do you think we should do first? Let's convert it to degrees. That'll make your life a little easier, for sure. Why can't I scoot this? There we go. So I'm going to convert this to degrees. So when we do this, right, pi goes on the top, 180 goes on, I mean, sorry, pi goes on the bottom, 180 on the top. So pi's cancel out. Now let's think about this. What can I simplify this to? You're not going to get a decimal. You're going to get something that you'll be able to, to work with. But let's just do 180 divided by 12, and I get 15. So what I'm looking for is the cosine of 15 degrees. Now think about this, guys. I need two angles on the unit circle. It could be any two. You could do 135 and 120, right? You could do 240 and 225, whatever you want to do. But I need two angles that will somehow add or subtract to give me 15. You got, let's do 120 and 
135. What are some other ones we could use? You could use 45 and 30. Well, we'll try that. I'm going to try something else just because. But do you guys agree with me that 135 minus 120 equals 15? Yes? Okay, so let's write down the information that we know. We're going to use, what did I say? 135? I forgot already. 135, and we're going to use 120. This is how you guys should do this. This is how you would show me your work. What is the ordered pair for 135? Negative root 2 over 2 and positive root 2 over 2. So negative root 2 over 2 comma positive root 2 over 2. Good. What is the ordered pair for 120? Negative, negative 1 half. Uh, root three over two. Perfect. Negative 1 half and root 3 over 2. Now before I even look at what formula I want to use, I'm going to tell myself, okay, this value, this is y, this is, sorry, this is x, this is y, this is x, this is y. So this right here is my cosine, correct? This right here is my sine. This right here is my cosine. This right here is my sine because that's, that's what I'm going to have to use in my formula. So remind me again, just so I don't forget, keep telling yourself this. What did you guys do with 135 and 120? You added them together to get 15, or you subtracted to get 15? You subtracted. So let's go up here to our formulas. And we're finding cosine. So this is the formula I'm going to use. Everybody agree with me? So I take the two cosines, and I do what? No. Add that the formula. You got to look at the formula. So it's cosine. And I'm going to do 135 first because don't you guys agree? We're doing 135 minus 120, correct? It's not 120 minus 135. So I have cosine of 135 times the cosine of 120. Isn't that what the formula is? Let's check. Yep, cosine, cosine. And then it's plus sine of 135 times the sine of 120. All I did was just use my formula. And now I'm just going to substitute in. Instead of cosine of 135, what am I putting in? Bless you. What am I putting in? What's the cosine of 135, guys? Which kind of root 2 over 2? Negative. Negative root 2 over 2. Got to have your signs correct times the cosine of, God bless you, the cosine of 120 is what? Negative, Negative one half, good. Then my formula says plus, what is the sine of 135? Root two over two times what is the sine of 120? Root three over two, good. And now we simplify. Multiply the numerators. What's the square root of 2 times negative square root of 2 times negative 1? Positive root 2, right? Negative times a negative is a positive. And 2 times 2 is 4. Plus, a house times a house gives me? So negative 2, I'm sorry, root 2 times root 3 is root 6 over 2 times 2 is? Four. And now it's one more little thing I could do to simplify this. Okay, so I have root 2 plus root 6 over what? Perfect. That is it. Does it kind of look like the, the first answer we did? Yeah, kind of does. But that's okay. That is okay, guys, because if you're using the formula correctly, you're doing exactly what you should. That's exactly how these problems should be worked out. If this said sine, instead of cosine, if it said sine, then what would you do? You'd look at the what formula? The sine formula. Okay, on your web assign, I put a few tangents in there. They're kind of hard. I know that. Tomorrow I'll go over some tangent stuff with you. 
Um, real quick question. If I said to you I wanted negative pi over 12, What does the negative mean? When we look, when we converted this, we got 15 degrees, right? So be negative 15. So you'd have to go the opposite direction. Again, if that confuses you, don't worry about it. I'm not going to give you any negatives on your quiz. I just threw one of those in there on WebAssign just for you guys to see. But remember, the negative just means direction. So don't worry about that. All right. So tomorrow, I'll upload this now.